Our first question today is, <clears throat> why should we buy gold from Jesus? Now, if you've seen any gold lately, you could be thinking of that heavy, yellowy, shiny metal. Oh, gold. <laughs> but think spiritual gold, right? Think Jesus wants you to buy spiritual gold from him. Revelation 3, 18, <clears throat> I counsel to you to buy from me, Jesus, gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, rich spiritually. Now, those of you who know this scripture well, you could say, <clears throat> aha, this is to the Laodicean church. I am not a Laodicean. So it doesn't count to me. It doesn't apply to me, right? But verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous and repent. Right? But verse 22 of Revelation 3 says, He who has an ear, if you've got a spiritual ear to listen to what Jesus is saying, he says, Let him hear what the Spirit, what the message of the Spirit, the Spirit message says to the churches. So every message to all the churches can be applicable to everybody for the next 2,000 years, including us. So we should listen to and we should focus on for today. Why is Jesus saying, buy from me, Jesus, gold? What could, we, what could we do with spiritual gold if we bought some from Jesus? Right? Okay, Paul kind of gives us a clue, and he says that some believers are building golden buildings. How many would you like to build a golden building? Wouldn't that sound great? That'd be great, wouldn't it? 1 Corinthians 3, 9. We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You, church people, are God's building. You're God's building. <coughs> so, verse 10, <clears throat> according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master building, builder, I have laid the foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ. I've explained the foundation to you. And another builds on it. But, he says, let each person take heed how he builds. In a little bit you're going to see that each person is building, that is building, but some are building out of gold and silver and precious stones and some are building out of hay, wood and stubble, which you'll see in the text is a bad move. And most of us go, <clears throat> well, I don't know what gold looks like, spiritual gold, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what straw, gold, spiritual straw, what does that look like? Anybody know what that looks like? I don't know what that looks like. Okay. So he says, take heed, and he goes on to explain in 1 Corinthians 3.11, he says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation of Jesus Christ with gold, aha, there it is, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, verse 13, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, fiery trials, fiery tests, and the fire would test each one's work of what sort his work is. So, so when the you know when the, when it's done, we're going to be able to look back and know whether we were building of gold, silver, precious stones, hay, wood, or stubble. Because at the end, we'll look back and see what it was. But we want to know now, don't we? We want to know ahead of time what kind of building is shown after the fiery test, verse 14. If anyone's work, which he has built on it, the foundation, Jesus Christ, if it endures, he will receive a reward. Yay, I'm all for rewards. I love grace. Grace is a different subject than rewards. A lot of people get them all mixed up together. But grace is a free gift from God, eternal life free gift. You can't earn it, okay? Then rewards. You can get big rewards or little rewards. Hey. If I'm going to do this, I want to go for big rewards. King David got big rewards, right? Because he was a man after God's own heart. Okay, so he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if any man's work is burned, okay, if you're building out of hay, wood, or strubble, uh-oh, you might expect that that is going to be burned. Because <laughs> so, hay, wood, and stubble doesn't do well in the fire, right? He will suffer loss. Boy, I wonder what that is. You know? But he himself will be saved. Uh, there's the good news, right? If you're building and you're not knowing that you're building out of hay, wood, or stubble and it gets burned and you suffer loss, you're still going to be saved. That's, boy, God is merciful, isn't he? Isn't that fantastic? Um, 
yet through fire. So we're still given eternal life, if that's how we're doing it, <coughs> because we're always trying to build for Jesus and trying to build on the foundation of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Each one of us is a small temple, holy place, dwelling place for God, and kind of that's what we're building. Are we building good quality ones? Are we building poor quality ones? That's the question. Where the Spirit of God dwells. In verse 10, Paul urges us all to take heed how we are building. So, <clears throat> he says, you know, oops, wait, we should have started with buying gold, and now we're going to take heed what we're building. Jesus shows how to take heed in Luke 6, 46. He says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Is that, is that easy to understand? I'm the Lord, says Jesus, so that means you do what I tell you. <laughs> A lot of people go, hey, I like you, Jesus, but hey, this doing what you say, hey, we, we just like you. <laughs> no, no, it's got to be for the whole deal. Verse 47, whoever comes <clears throat> to me, you've got to come to Jesus. You've got to seek out Jesus and his teaching. B, he who hears my sayings, pays close attention to my sayings, but we're not done yet. We've got to go to see and does what I teach, does what I say. I'll show you what he's like. So we must come wanting to hear so that we can do what he says. With an e, you know. Now an example of this is if you're going into pilot training and you're, gonna, you're planning to solo and fly a plane and later fly your little children and your wife and maybe some relatives, you're going to fly them through the sky. Do you want to be a good pilot or a lousy pilot? You want to be a good pilot. You want to kill your family, right? So you learn hearing so that you can get it right, so that you can safely transport your family. Okay, Jesus continues in verse 48. He is like a man building a house who, I love this in Luke, who dug deep. Have you ever dug deep? Guys, guys, you ever dug deep? It's work. Right? Dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against the house, could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. He also built a really well-constructed house. Why would you build a flimsy house on, after digging deep and setting your foundation? Why would you build a flimsy house on top of it? You're building a solid house from beginning to end, right? And it was, so it was well-connected to the foundation. Then he goes on to the building failure situation because the person made no big effort to connect with the foundation. It's like, uh, <clears throat> okay, you're hearing, but you're not doing. The, the doing of the hearing is what makes for solid foundations and solid buildings and buildings that survive whatever may come. 49, Luke 6, 49. But he who heard and did nothing. Okay, that's got to be a wrong translation, folks. It's got to be a wrong translation, right? Because you can ask anybody, there's two plus billion Jesus following people, and you ask them, do you follow Jesus? Yes. Are you doing nothing? No. So it's a poor translation, and, and I'll show you why, right? Because <clears throat> the next part says, is like a man who built a house on the earth with no foundation, without a foundation. Did he build a house? Yes. So he didn't do nothing, did he? He built a house. What's the problem here? The problem is, you builders know what this is all about. If, and, and I've been to the beach a lot of times, and you've seen hurricanes come on shore, right? If you build a house just straight on the, on the sand, or just on the dirt, and along comes a hurricane, where you might expect your house might be after the hurricane? Gone. Disappeared. Half a mile away. It could be anywhere, in pieces, whatever, right? So he says this second kind who hears what Jesus is teaching. Maybe they read their Bible through completely every year. I read my Bible every year from beginning to end. 66 books. I read the whole thing every year. <laughs> yeah. But did you do what he had said? That's the critical point. So this person builds his house without foundation, right? And the stream beats vehemently on it and immediately fell. And the ruin of that house was great. You don't want this kind of house. Jesus points to successful buildings in Luke 10, 25. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Most people on Christian radio, you better not try and do anything. 
Jesus does it all. You don't do anything. Well, hey, what did Jesus just say? Are we hearing Jesus? Or, or are we hearing what people say about Jesus? Right? So he said, you know, what must I do to inter inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, he says, what do, you, what do you see written in the law? What do you see in the Old Testament? What's, how do you understand and interpret what you've seen written in the Bible? And the guy said, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and being and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you answered that rightly. You got it right. 100% on the test. You're good. Then he said, do it and you will live, meaning live eternally. So he's saying, yes, this is the way to eternal life. You love God with all your heart and soul and mind and being and your strength. You listen to what God says. You agree with God's thinking and you make an effort to love your neighbor. Now, the guy said, well, who is my neighbor? Right? <laughs> so I'm pushing Jesus a little bit. Right? So he tells the Good Samaritan story in verse 36. He, he asks the question, he says, so which of these three people do you think was neighbor or neighborly to him who fell amongst the thieves? This guy was dying on the side of the street. If nobody had helped him, he would be dead. Right? Verse 37, the guy answers Jesus. He said, well, I, I guess it's the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said, yep, go and do likewise. Right? So it isn't so much, who's my neighbor? Well, you find out where your property is, and your neighbor is over the fence, and over the fence, and over the fence. No, he's saying, when you come across needy people, not necessarily over your fence, when you come across needy people, that's your neighbor. And if you show compassion on your neighbor according to the way God is teaching, then that's what you're supposed to go do. So we're talking about the love factor. The love factor is based on hearing the thinking of Jesus from the words of Jesus without the static of human beings telling you you don't have to do anything. Or you give your heart to Jesus and you will go to heaven when you die. Two plus billion Jesus following people believe that down to their socks. I trust Jesus. I love Jesus. When I die, poof, there I am in heaven. And guess what? In the second resurrection, poof, oops, they're not in heaven. They're back in the fleshly body in the second resurrection, you know. So, love fact is based on hearing what Jesus says so we can be doing what Jesus says. Verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 13. Though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Wait a minute. You mean I feed the poor and I don't have love and it's not worth anything? Or I give my body to be burned for Jesus' name and I don't have love and it's not worth anything? What are you saying here, Jesus, through Paul? What are you saying? Okay, we need sacrificial love of God for needy people is what Jesus is teaching. If you listen closely to what Jesus is teaching, that's what he's saying. So to be building of gold, we need to be coming daily to... Jesus, wanting to hear very clearly what he is teaching, what we need to be doing to love those needy people around us. And, and Jesus in, encapsulated this thinking in one simple little parable in Matthew 25, 34. He said, the king will say to those on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of God prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is it. You're about to live for all eternity. Verse 35. Because I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. You helped people. You helped needy people. According to what Jesus teaches. Golden buildings are built by this. Verse 27 of Luke 10. He answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, he said, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. This is the way to eternal life. Go ahead. Hear what I say. Do what I say. So golden buildings are when we make great effort to love God mightily and our neighbor as ourselves.